Hi there, my name is Michelle Lindsay Bahari. I'm a life coaching tutor for the WEA and today's life coaching session is for the Recovery College. Today we're going to focus on ego states and the importance of how living in the ego can affect our lives and how being aware of it and having that self-awareness and blocking ourselves from living in that ego state can bring a serenity, it can bring a peace. So we're going to go through a few handouts today and I'm going to talk you through how that's going to look. Okay, enjoy. Okay, so the chimp is the ego. The human is the higher self. What does that even mean? Let's assess. What does the ego stroke personality want? What does the identity or basic instincts want? And what does the higher self or what some will call the soul want? What does the ego or personality want? Let's just take this a little bit further. So what does the personality want? It wants to be respected. It wants to be liked. It wants to be loved. It wants to be popular. It wants to be right. Often it wants to be right more than happy. So the ego is quite a force. Second point is what does the idea of basic instincts want? This is going back to the very beginning. Think of a baby. What does a baby need? It needs to be fed. It needs milk. It needs to feel safe. Very simple, basic needs. And then what does the higher self or soul want? This is when rather than about it being about yourself, it starts to become about others. So the higher self wants compassion. It's starting to think outward. It's starting to think about what it would like to see for other people. It wants kindness. It wants peace. It wants equality. So you can see how the personality and the higher self differ. Personality, the ego, is about me, me, me. The higher self is often about how can I help others. And we're all these things. We are the ego, we are the ID, and we are the higher self. It's about getting a balance. If you're living in an ego state, there'll be a lot more disharmony in your life. If you're living more in the higher self state, you'll feel a lot more peaceful. Okay, so let's just go further with the chimp, also known as the ego. So as you can see here, we've got Donald Trump, who is the poster boy for ego. Donald Trump is the type of personality who isn't outward, he's very inward. If something happens to the world, he thinks, why did this happen to me? Rather than, what can I do to make this situation better? He's very ego driven, he's very self focused. He's got no self awareness, so he's not realising he's ego driven. But as we all know, he is. But then here you've got Gandhi, the polar opposite, the human, the higher self, the compassionate man. How can I help others? What can I do to make the world a better place? If something goes wrong, how can I improve this? Not why did this happen to me? So you're getting a, an idea now of the difference between the chimp and the human, also known as the ego and the higher self. So traits of emotional thinking or chimp mode or ego. So as you can see, there's a list below and when we when we live in from this list, we are in our ego state. We're more personality based. So if you're quite an ego driven person, you'll you can jump to an opinion quite quickly. Bearing in mind, think Donald Trump. Uh, ego driven, you can think in black and white. You can be quite paranoid. You can be quite suspicious about other people. Um, you can jump to the negative fairly quickly. You could be catastrophic, but it's the worst case scenario. 
everything's negative. If it's raining, it's the worst day ever. You can be irrational, where you're not really thinking in there's a grey area. It's back to you're jumping back to that black and white. Uh, and with an irrationality, there's links to paranoia and emotive judgment, you know, where you kind of, rather than logic and facts, you're going from a feeling, which is not often a bad thing. But if it's a negative emotional judgment, it can cause problems. Um, we do it every day. You make judgments about people every day. There's people you see in the supermarket, something about them triggers something in you. You like them, you dislike them. Why? It's coming from some emotional judgment. You haven't got all the facts. It's not balanced. It's not a balanced point of view. So what I'm trying to encourage here is I want you to think more about your thinking. Because when you are living in an ego state, you are suffering. When you are, when you have an awareness of your ego state, when you realise, oh yeah, that's my ego talking, you have self awareness, and you can dampen the ego. You can feel more balanced. You can feel more peaceful. Your ego is in control. So let's work our way through this list. So number one, you feel unfulfilled and search for the next thing that will make you feel good. So there's a restlessness about you. You're on the search for something. You don't feel relaxed. Number two, you gossip frequently. That's an interesting one. Because often when you can catch yourself gossiping, you do realise the ego is in control. The ego wants to gossip, so suppress it. Number three, when you feel wronged, you have trouble letting go, if not vindicated. I can relate with that one. I'm sure we all can. Can we let go? Some things we can't. Some things we want to hang on to. Remember, ego loves story. The stronger your story, the stronger your ego. That's how the ego identifies itself, through its story. If you scrap that story, the ego disappears. And it doesn't want that. It wants to live. Number four, you compare yourself to others. And in this day and age, I think that's more prevalent than any other. Think of social media, how we look at images of other people, other people's families, other people's holidays, their perfect life. Why haven't I got that life? But how real is that life? So comparison, it's, it's deadly. Avoid it. When you catch yourself doing it, stop. You're not living in your own business. You're not living in your own life. You're in somebody else's business. You're in somebody else's lane. Number five, you feel unhappy about other people's successes. Also known as envy. Jealousy. Not a nice feeling to have. We've all experienced it. It's a human trait. The ego loves envy. So when you feel it, monitor it. Number six, you blame other people or outside circumstances when things go wrong. So you're not responsible for yourself. It's all about blaming others. Number seven, you complain about situations and people. It's a little bit like gossiping, complaining, isn't it? And it's a very British trait. We love to complain, particularly about the weather. Number eight, you are unable to let go of the past. Again, something we can all recognise. There's certain things we like to latch on to because it, it gives us an identity. Now, if you, if you release pain from the past... The ego doesn't want that, it wants its story. But what are you gaining by holding on to it? What's the higher self gaining? Number nine, you are always waiting for something in the future to happen. That Again, that's back to that restlessness. You know, you're not living in the present, you're not living in the now. It's always about, it'll be better tomorrow, it'll be better next week. But what about now? Remember, there's only now. You live in the now, you don't live in the tomorrow or the next week. Number 10, you fear there is never enough. That's a big one. 
And I think when you fear there is never enough, you can become quite empty. There's always enough. There's always enough. Number 11. You feel anxiety, stress, restlessness, boredom and unease. Boredom's a big part of the ego. It enjoys it. Number 12. You enhance your sense of self through objects. If only you had that better car. You know, that better kitchen, that holiday, that dress, those shoes, whatever it is. What is that all about? Why are you experiencing that? Why is there an emptiness? Why do you need to fill it with stuff? We all feel it. You're not alone. It's being aware of it. As soon as you're aware of a thought, you can put a pin in it. It's like a bubble. Burst it. Number 13, you make yourself a victim or a hero. That's the black and white thinking again. That's the Trump mentality. I am good, therefore he is bad. That's not how the world is. It's a projection. It's not fact. Number 14, you often use the word, the word I or me or mine or my a lot. Me, me, me. Mine, my, mine. It's mine. That's my idea. I think this, I think that. So you're very inward, you're not outward, you're not thinking about other people. You're living in your own head a lot. Be free of it, it's a prison. Number 15, your identity is entwined with roles and labels. So you're a mother, you're a sister, you're a daughter, you're a father, you're a brother, you're a son. Yeah, the labels, they're important, but it's not who you are. You're only you. You're not all that. You're not all that other stuff. You're simply you. Strip away all those labels, all those roles. Get back to who you really are. Just you. Takes a lot of pressure off. The ego likes pressure. Don't appease the ego. So now we're moving on to human mode or higher self, traits of logical thinking. So now we've gone more into the Gandhi mindset. Or actually you haven't, you've just gone into the mindset where you're not ego driven. You come in more from the higher self. So what does that look like? Well, it's more evidence based. So it's instantly become more logical than the chimp mode. You make decisions based on evidence, not on just how you feel or a whim. You're more rational. It's more in context and it has perspective. You see things clearly. There's not, not nothing's heightened with emotional judgment anymore. It's become more how things actually are rather than you projecting onto something. You projecting onto a person or a situation. You creating a story out of something, making it bigger than it actually is. The ego loves a story. The ego thrives with the story. That's how we keep the ego alive by making something bigger and bigger and bigger. A situation bigger and bigger. Then you've got the shades of grey and balanced judgment and balanced judgment. Where yeah, sometimes something isn't just bad or good. There's something in the middle. There's a middle ground. Someone isn't just bad or just good. He or she has a middle ground. We all do. Nobody's one thing or another. And often one thing isn't one thing or another. So it's about experiencing things, balancing them up. Rather than jumping to conclusions. Dampen the ego. Think more from the higher self. You'll always reach peace. If you've got mind chatter and something's constantly on replay in the head, it's the ego. It's the ego strengthening its story. Hi there, it's me again, Michelle. So I hope that gives you some clarity um, about the ego states, about the ego, the higher self, 
and when we are operating from the higher self, how much peace we feel. And when we surrender to the higher self, how much peace we feel. So I hope you benefited from this short session and hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.